In this short episode, we'll take a look at the mysterious land of Magan, a place that is mentioned relatively often in early texts from ancient Mesopotamia. Magan, also read as Makan, was the name of an ancient land that appears in Bronze and Early Iron Age texts from Mesopotamia. According to these texts, it was one of the countries that occupied the region along the Lower Sea. Today, this would encompass parts of Oman and the United Arab Emirates. It's from Magan that the city-states and later empires of Mesopotamia imported all sorts of rare and valuable goods, including wood, copper, gold, silver, and perhaps most prized of all, a black stone known as diorite, which was used to make beautiful sculptures and monuments. We first start to see a lot of items carved out of diorite from the time of the Akkadian Empire of Sargon the Great, though some of the more famous works were commissioned by King Gudea of Lagash around 2100 BC. In exchange for its goods, Magan would often receive wool, animal hides, sesame oil, plant products, and some finished items, such as pottery and crafts, from Mesopotamia. Though Magan was a considerable distance from Mesopotamia, that doesn't mean it didn't get sucked into the region's politics. Due to the important commodities said to have been in abundant supply there, the more powerful kings of Sumer and Akkad did their best to claim its resources as their own. One of the earliest mentions of Magan is by Sargon of Akkad, also known as Sargon the Great. He states, Sargon, king of Kish, fought 34 battles victoriously. He destroyed city walls as far as the edge of the sea. Ships from Meluha, Magan, and Dilmun docked at Akkad. Sargon's grandson, Naram-Sin, even claims to have launched a campaign against the country and captured its king, Manium. However, assuming such a campaign actually happened, it would have been a rather isolated incident, as realistically, Magan was considered to have been far too remote, and perhaps even too sparsely populated to have warranted a long-term presence there. Other empires of Mesopotamia, for example the Neo-Sumerian Empire of Urnamu and Shulgi, and later several Babylonian states, also claim to have had strong ties with Magan. As for the ancient people of Magan, they're a bit of a mystery. Since few remains of any sizable Bronze Age settlements have been uncovered there so far, archaeologists are not sure just how Magan's inhabitants really lived. Were they mostly nomads, or did they have permanent settlements similar to those in Mesopotamia? There have been several mud brick towers discovered from the period, but it's not certain as to what their purpose was. Perhaps they were shelters for local rulers, or maybe they were simply storage centers, like many warehouses. There have also been several tombs uncovered that contain hundreds of skeletons, especially between the years 1800 to 1000 BC. Such mass graves without any nearby settlements would seem to indicate that at least at the time, the people of Magan may have been primarily nomadic. Later on, during the Iron Age, we do start to see the remains of more urban settlements, and Magan appears again in the texts of the Neo-Assyrian Empire where it's called Kade, and had a king named Pade, who ruled over a city called Izki, who brought tribute to the Assyrian emperor, Ashurbanipal, around the year 640 BC. After that though, Magan seems to disappear from the texts of ancient Mesopotamia, though it does appear as Maka in Achaemenid Persian texts, as well as in administrative documents written in Elamite, that were uncovered amongst the archives of Persepolis. In those documents, it's called Makash. So, I hope that this short program gave you some idea of where Magan was and why it was a pretty important place in antiquity. Thanks so much for stopping by, I really appreciate it. If you learned something or simply just enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to hit that like button because it helps the channel out a lot. Also, check out the History with Sai podcast where I go into more detail with regard to some of the topics discussed on the channel. You can also follow History with Sai on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Take care, and stay safe.